him in Italy. Now and again I am troubled by the thought, what next? My future is that. The darkest thing in the world to me, but as there still remains a great deal for me to do, I suppose I ought rather to think of doing this than of my future, and leave the rest to the end.
fly open unto the all being as words and word cabinet. Here all being wanted to become words, here all becoming wanted to learn of thee how to talk. This is my experience of inspiration. I do not doubt but that one would have to go back thousands of years in order to find someone who can say to me, it is mine also. And what? In the autumn of 1883 my brother left the Engadine for Introduction 21 Germany and stayed there a few weeks In the following winter, after wandering somewhat erratically through streets at Genoa and Spezia, he landed in Nice, where the climate so happily promoted his creative powers that he wrote the third part of and quad, Zarathustra, and quad, and quad, in the winter, beneath the halcyon sky of night, which then looked down upon me for the first time in my life, I found the third Zarathustra and came to the end of my task, the whole having occupied me scarcely a year. Many hidden corners and heights in the landscapes round about nice are hallowed to me by unforgettable moments. That decisive chapter entitled Old and New Tables was composed in the very difficult descent from the station to ease of that one burgle Norwich village in the rocks. My most creative moments were always accompanied by unusual muscular activity. The body is inspired. Let us wave the question of the soul. I might often have been seen dancing in those days. Without a suggestion of fatigue I could then walk for seven or eight hours on end among the hills. I slept well and laughed well I was perfectly robust and patient. And quad, as we have seen, each of the three parts of an quad. Zarathustra and Quad was written after a more or less short period of preparation in about 10 days. The composition of the fourth part alone was broken by occasional interruptions. The first notes relating to this part were written while he and I were staying together in Zurich in September 1884. In the following November, while staying at Mentone, he began to elaborate these notes, and after a long pause, finished the manuscript at nice between the end of January and the middle of February 1885. M. Brother then called this part the fourth and last, but even before, and shortly after it had been privately printed, he wrote to me saying that he still intended writing a fifth and sixth part, and notes relating to these parts are now in my possession. This, XX11, Introduction Fourth part the original MS of which contains this note, and plot, only for my friends, not for the public and plot winking face, is written in a particularly personal spirit, and those few the me free. Sent to the copy of it, he pledged to the strictest secrecy concerning its contents. He often thought of making this fourth part public also doubted whether he would ever be able to do so without considerably altering certain portions of it at all. Events he resolved to distribute this manuscript production, of which only 40 copies were printed, only among those who had proved themselves worthy of it, and it speaks eloquently of his utter loneliness and need of sympathy in those days, that he had occasion to present only seven copies of his book accord. Into to this resolution, Already at the beginning of this history I hinted at the ray suns which led my brother to select a Persian as the incarnation of his ideal of the majestic philosopher. His reasons, however, for choosing Zarathustra of all others to be his mouthpiece, he gives us in the following words, and quad, he 
people have never asked me, as they should have done, what the name Zarathustra precisely means in my mouth, in the mouth of the first immoralist. But what distinguishes that philosopher from all others in the past is the very fact that he was exactly the reverse of an immoralist. Zarathustra was the first to see in the struggle between good and evil the essential wheel and the working of things. The translation of morality into the metaphysical, this force, cause, and in itself, was this work. But the very question suggests its own answer. Zarathustra created the most important to Sarah. Morality, consequently, he should also be the first to perceive that error, not only because he has had longer and greater experience of the subject than any other thinker, all history is the experimental reputation of the theory of the so called moral order of things. The more important point is introduction. Understood. Exley. That Zarathustra was more truthful than any other thinker. In his teaching alone do we meet with truthfulness upheld as the highest virtue i.e. the reverse of the cowardice of the ideal is to please from reality. Zarathustra had more courage in his body than any other thinker before or after him. To tell the truth and to aim straight, that is the first Persian virtue. Am I carrot? The overcoming of morality through itself through truthfulness. The overcoming of the moral is through his opposite through me. That is what the name Zarathustra means in my mouth. And why? Elizabeth Forster means SCHB. Nietzsche Archives, Weimar, December 1905. Asterisk and Am. GT YHUS Big 7 Arathustra Carrot Arathustra S. Prolog When Zarathustra was 30 years old, he left his home in the lake of his home and went into the mountains. There he enjoyed his spirit and his solitude, and for 10 years did not weary of it. But at last his heart changed, and rising one morning with the rosy dawn, he went before the sun, and spake thus unto it, Thou great star, what would be thy happiness if thou hadst, not those for whom thou shinnest? For ten years hast thou climbed hither unto my cave, thou wouldst stay wearied of thy light and of the journey, had it not been for me, mine eagle, and my serpent. But we awaited thee every morning, took from thee thine overflow, and blessed thee for it. Lo! I am weary of my wisdom, like the bee that hath gathered too much honey, I need hands outstretched to take it. I would fain bestow and distribute, and tell the wise have once more become joyous in their folly, and the poor happy in their riches. Therefore must I descend into the deep, as thou doest in the evening, when thou goest behind the sea, and givest light also to the nether world, thou exuberant star. Like thee must I go down, as men say, to whom I shall descend. For, C-A-R-A-T-H-U-S-T-R-A-S Prologue Bless me, then, thou tranquil eye, that canst behold even the greatest happiness without envy. Bless the cup that is about to overflow, that the water may flow golden out of it, and carry everywhere the reflection of thy bliss. Lo, this cup is again going to empty itself, and Zarathustra is again going to be a man. Thus began Zarathustra's down going. Zarathustra went down the mountain alone, no one meeting him. When he entered the forest, however, there's 
suddenly stood before him an old man, who had left his holy God to seek fruits. And thus spake the old man to Zarathustra, and quoth, No stranger to me is this wanderer, many years ago passed he by. Zarathustra he was called, but he hath altered. Then thou carriedst thine ashes into the mountains, will thou now carry thy fire into the valleys? Fearest thou not the incendiary as soon? Yea, I recognize Zarathustra. Here is his eyes, and no loathing lurketh about his mouth. Goeth he not along like his answer? Altered is Zarathustra, a child hath Zarathustra become, and awakened one is Zarathustra, what wilt thou do in the land of the sleepers? As in the sea hast thou lived in solitude, and it hath borne thee up. Alas, wilt thou now go ashore? Alas, wilt thou again drag thy body thyself? And what? Zarathustra answered, and quoth, I love mankind, and quoth. Z-A-R-A-T-H-U-S-T-R-A-S prologue. 5. And quoth, why, and quoth, said the same, and quoth, did I go into the forest in the desert? Was it not because I love men far too well? Now I love God. Men, I do not love. Man is a thing too imperfect for me. Love to man would be fatal to me. And quoth, Zarathustra answered, And quoth, what spake I of love? I am bring. And quoth, if, in gifts unto men. And quoth, the nothing. And quoth, said the saint. And quoth, take rather part of their load, and carry it along with them that will be most agreeable unto them, if only it be agreeable unto thee. If, however, thou wilt give unto them, give them no more than an alms, and let them also beg for it. And quoth, and quoth, no, and quoth, replied Zarathustra, and quoth, I give no alms. I am not poor enough for that. And quoth, the saint laughed at Zarathustra, and spake thus, and quoth, then see to it that they accept thy treasures. They are distrustful of anchorites, and do not believe that we come with gifts. The fall of our footsteps ringeth too hollow through their streets. And just as at night, when they are in bed and hear a man abroad long before sunrise, so they ask themselves concerning us, where goeth the thief? Go not to men, but stay in the forest. Go rather to the Ani. Malls, why not be like me a bear amongst bears, a bird? Amongst birds, and quad, and quad. And what though the saint in the forest? And what? asked Zarathustra. The saint answered, And what? I make hymns and sing them, and in making hymns I laugh and weep and mumble, thus do I praise God. With singing, weeping, laughing, and mumbling do I praise the God who is my God. But what dost thou bring us as a gift? And quad, when Zarathustra had heard these words, he bowed to the saint and said, And quad, what should I have to give thee? Let me rather hurry hence lest I take out away from me. And quad, and thus, six, Z-A-J-A-T-H-U-S-T-R-A-S prologue. They parted from one another, the old man and Zarathustra, laughing like schoolboys. When Zarathustra was alone, however, he said to his heart, And what, could it be possible? This old saint in the forest hath not yet heard of it, that God is dead. And what, selves. When Zarathustra
Zarathustra arrived at the nearest town which had joined at the forest, he found many people assembled in the marketplace, for it had been announced that a rope dancer would give a performance. And Zarathustra spake thus unto the people, Teach me the Superman. Man is something that is to be surpassed. What have ye done to surpass man? All beings hitherto have created something beyond them. And ye want to be the ebb of that great tide, and would rather go back to the beast than surpass man. What is the epitome? A laughing stock, a thing of shame. And just the same shall man be to the Superman, a laughing stock, a thing of shame. Ye have made your way from the worm to man, and much within you is still worm. Once were ye apes, and even yet man is more of an ape than any of the apes. Even the wisest among you is only a disharmony and hybrid of plan and phantom. But who I bid you become phantoms or plants? Lo, I reach you the Superman. The Superman is the meaning of the earth. Let your will say, the Superman shall be the meaning of the earth. I conjure you, my brethren, remain true to the earth, and be. C-A-R-A-T-H-U-S-T-R-A-S-P-R-O-L-L-B in U-M. Closing parenthesis. Leave not those who speak unto you of super earthly hopes. Poisoners are they, whether they know it or not. Despisers of life are they, decaying ones and poisoned ones themselves, of whom the earth is weary, so away with them. Once blasphemy against God was the greatest blasphemy, but God died, and therewith also those blasphemers. To blaspheme may the earth is now the dreadfulest sin, and to read the heart of the unknowable higher than the meaning of the earth. Once the soul lived contemptuously on the body, and then that contempt was the supreme thing. The soul wished the body meager, ghastly, and famished. Thus it ought to escape from the body and the earth. Oh, that soul was itself meager, ghastly, and famished, and cruelty was the delight of that soul. But ye, also, my brethren, tell me, what did your body say about your soul? Is your soul not poverty, arid pollution, and wretched self-complacency? Verily, a polluted stream is man. One must be a sea, to receive a polluted stream without becoming impure. Lo, I teach you the Superman. He is that sea, in him can your great contempt be submerged. What is the greatest thing we can experience? It is the hour of great contempt. The hour in which even your happiness becometh loathsome unto you, and so also your reason and virtue. The hour when ye say, and what, what good is my happiness? It is poverty and pollution and wretched self-complacency, but my happiness should justify existence itself. And what, the hour when ye say, and what, what good is my reason? Does it long for knowledge of the lion for his food? It is poverty and pollution on your wretched self-complacency. And what, the hour when ye say, and what, what good is my virtue? As yet it hath no one made me passionate. How weary I am of my good. Eight. There is his dress, prologue, and my bad, it is all poverty and pollution and wretched self, complacency, and plot, the hour when ye say, and plot, what good is my justice? I do not see that I am fervor and fuel. The just, however, are fervor, and fuel, and plot, the hour when ye say, and cloth, what good is my pity? Is not pity the cross on which he is nailed to love man? But 
that my pity is not a crucifixion. End quote. Have ye ever spoken thus? Have ye ever cried thus? Ah, who that I had heard you crying thus? It is not your sin, it is your self-satisfaction that crieth unto heaven. Your very sparingness in sin crieth unto heaven. Where is the lightning to lick you with its tongue? Where is the frenzy with which ye should be inoculated? Lo, I teach you the Superman. He is that lightning. He is that frenzy. When Zarathustra had thus spoken, one of the people called out, and Claus, we have now heard enough of the rope dancer, it is time now for us to see him. And Claus, and all the people laughed at Zarathustra. And the rope dancer, who thought the words a he applied to him, began his performance. Zarathustra, however, looked at the people and wondered. Then he spake thus. Man is a rope stretched between the animal and the superman are over an abyss. A dangerous crossing, a dangerous wayfaring, a dangerous looking back, a dangerous trembling and halting. What is great in man is that he is a bridge and not a goal. Zarathustra as prologue. Nine what is lovable in man is that he is an overgoing and a downgoing. I love those that know not how to live except as downgoers, for they are the overgoers. I love the great despisers, because they are the great adorers, and arrows of longing for the other shore. I love those who do not first seek a reason beyond the stars for going down and being sacrifices, that sacrifice themselves to the earth, that the earth of the superman may hereafter arrive. I love him who liveth in order to know, and seeketh to know in order that the superman may hereafter live. Thus seeketh he his own downgoing. I love him who adoreth and inventeth, that he may build the house for the superman, and prepare for him earth, animal, and plant, for thus seeketh he his own downgoing. I love him who loveth his virtue, for virtue is the will to downgoing, and an arrow of longing. I love him who reserveth no share of spirit for himself, but wanteth to be holy the spirit of his virtue, thus walketh he his spirit over the bridge. I love him who maketh his virtue his inclination and destiny. Thus, for the sake of his virtue, he is willing to live on, or live no more. I love him who desires not too many virtues. One virtue is more of a virtue than two, because it is more of a not for one s. Destiny to cling to it. I love him who is full of lavish. Wanteth no thanks, Anna. Did not give back, for he always bestoweth, and desires not to keep for himself. One love him who is ashamed when the dice fall in his favor, and who then asketh, and plot, am I a dishonest player? And plot, for he is willing to succumb. I know, there is no stress. I love him who scattereth golden words in advance of his being, and always goes more than he premises, for he seeketh his own downgoing. I love him who justifies the future ones and greedy men, the past ones, for he is willing to succumb through the present ones. I love him who chasteneth his God, because he loveth his God, for he must succumb through the wrath of his God. I love him who is so as deep even in the wounding, and may succumb through a small matter, thus goeth he willingly. Over the bridge. I love him who is so as so overfull that he forgeteth himself, and all things are in him, thus all things become his down. Going. I love him who is of a free spirit and a free heart. Thus is his 
had only THS vowels in his heart. His heart, however, housing is down going. I love all who are like heavy drops falling one by one out of the dark cloud that lower over man. They herald the coming of the lightning and succumb as heralds. I am a herald of the lightning, and a heavy drop out of the cloud. The lightning, however, is the Superman. When Zarathustra had spoken these words, he again looked at the people, and was silent. And Quad, there they stand, and Quad, said he to his heart, and Quad, there they laugh, they understand me not. I am not the mouth for these ears. Must one first batter their ears, that they may learn to hear with their eyes? Must one clatter like kettle drums there in pen I? I are thus dress. Prologue. H. Potential creatures. Or do they only believe this to mirror? They have something where they are proud. What do they call it? that which maketh them proud. Culture, they call it, ill distinguished them from the goatherds. They dislike, therefore, to hear a contempt of themselves, so I will appeal to their pride. I will speak unto them of TLIE most contemptible thing. That, however, is the last man, and cloth. And thus spake Zarathustra unto the people, It is time for man to fix his goal. It is time for man to plant the germ of his highest hope. Still is his soil rich enough for it. But that soil will one day be poor and exhausted, and no lofty tree will any longer be able to grow thereon. Alas! There cometh the time when men will no longer long to arrow beyond man and the string of his bow will have unlearned to it. I tell you, one must still have chaos in one, to give birth to a dancing star. I tell you, me have still chaos in you. Alas, there cometh the time when man will no longer give birth to any star. Alas, there cometh the time of the most despicable man, no longer despise himself. Lo, I show you the last man. And cloth, what is love? What is creation? What is longing? What is? So asketh the last man and blinketh. A star, and cloth. The earth hath then become small, and on it there hoppeth the last man who maketh everything small. His species is an eradicable like that of the ground sea, the last man liveth. Longest. And quad, we have discovered happiness and quad. Say the last men, and, blink thereby, they have left the region where it is hard to live, for that. 12. Zarathustra S. Prologue. Me warm. One still loveth one as neighbor and rubbeth against him, for one needeth warm. Turning ill and being distressful, they consider sinful, they walk warily. He is a fool who still stumbles over stones or men. A little poison now and then, that maketh pleasant dreams. And much poison at last for a pleasant death. One still worketh, for work is a pastime. If one is careful, lest the pastime should hurt one. One no longer becometh poor or rich, both are too burdensome. Who still wanteth to rule? Who still he wanteth to obey? Both are too burdensome. No shepherd, and one herd. Everyone wanteth the same. Everyone is equal. He who hath other sentiments goeth voluntarily into the madhouse. And what? Formerly all the world was insane. And what? Say the subtlest of them. And blink thereby. They are clever.
discover and know all that hath happened, so there is no end to their raillery. People still fall out, but are soon reconciled otherwise and spoils their stomachs. They have their little pleasures for the day, and their little pleasures for the night, but they have a regard for health, and plot, we have discovered happiness, and plot. Say the last men, and, going thereby, and here ended the first discourse of Zarathustra, which is, O oh Zarathustra, and plot, also called in plot, the prologue and plot, for at this point the shouting and mirth of the multitude interrupted him, and plot, it was this last man. They called out and plot, make us into these last men. Then will we make the present of the Superman, and plot, and all the people insulted and smacked their lips. Zarathustra, however,
Zarathustra made no answer thereto, but went on his way. When he had gone on for two hours, past forests and swamps, he had heard too much of the hungry howling of the wolves, and he himself became hungry. So he halted at a lonely house in which a light was burning, and fought, hunger attacked me, and fought, said Zarathustra, and fought, like a robber. Among forests and swamps my hunger attacked me, and late in the night, and fought, the strange humors hath my hunger. Often it cometh to me only after a repast, and all day it hath failed to come, where hath it been? And fought, and fought, hey! And thereupon Zarathustra knocked at the door of the house. An old man appeared, who carried a light, and asked, And what, cometh unto me in my bad sleep? And what, living man and a dead one? And what, said Zarathustra? And what, give me something to eat and drink? I forgot it during the day. He that feedeth the hungry refresheth his own soul, said wisdom. And thought, the old man withdrew, but came back immediately and offered Zarathustra bread and wine, and thought, a bad country for the hungry, and thought, said he, and thought, that is why I live here. Animal and man come unto me, the anchorite, but bid thy companion eat our sea. Zarathustra S. Prologue CJE and Quad I 17 Drink also, he is wearier than thou. And Quad Zarathustra answered Companion is dead, I shall hardly be able to persuade him. And Quad He T and Quad and Quad that did not concern me, and fought, said the old man sullenly. That knocketh at my door must take what I offer him. He, and fare ye well. And fought, thereafter Zarathustra again went on for two hours, trusting to the path and the light of the stars, for he was an experienced night walker, and liked to look into the face of all Thai slept. When the morning dawned, however, Zarathustra found himself in a thick forest, and no path was any longer visible. Heaven put the dead man in a hollow tree at his head for he wanted to protect him from the wolves and laid himself down in the ground and moss. And immediately he fell asleep, tired in body, but with a tranquil soul. Long slept Zarathustra, and not only the rosy dawn passed over his head, but also the morning. At last, however, his eyes opened, and amazedly he gazed into the forest and the stillness, amazedly he gazed into himself. Then he arose quickly, like a seafarer who all at once sees the land, and he shouted for joy, for he saw a new truth. And he spake thus to his heart, A light hath dawned upon me, I need companions living ones, not dead companions and corpses, which I carry with me where I will. But I need living companions, who will follow me because they want to follow themselves into the place where I will. A light hath dawned upon me, not of the people of Zarathustra to speak, but of companions. Zarathustra shall not be the herd as herdsmen and hounds. I.e. Zarathustra as Prologue To allure many from the herd for that purpose have I come. The people and the herd must be angry with me. A rob here shall Zarathustra be called by the herdsmen. Herdsmen, I say, but they call themselves the good and just. Herdsmen, 
I say, that they call themselves the believers in the orthodox faith. Behold the good and just, whom do they hate most? Him who breaketh up their tables of values, the breaker, the lawbreaker, he, however, is the creator. Behold the believers of all beliefs, whom do they hate most? Him who breaketh up their tables of values, the breaker, the lawbreaker, he, however, is the creator. The Creator seeketh, not corpses and not herds or believers either. Fellow Creators, the Creator seeketh those who break new values on new tables. Companions, the Creator seeketh, and fellow reapers, for everything is ripe for the harvest of Him. But He lacketh the hundred sickles, so He plucketh the ears of corn in His vex. Companions, the Creator seeketh, and such as know how to wed their sickles. Destroyers, will they be called, and despisers of good and evil. But they are the reapers and rejoicers. Fellow Creators, Zarathustra seeketh, fellow reapers and fellow rejoicers, Zarathustra seeketh, what hath he to do with herds and herdsmen and corpses? And thou, my first companion, rest in peace. Well have I buried thee in thy hollow tree. Well have I hid thee from the world. But I part from thee, the time hath arrived. Six rosy dawn and rosy dawn there come unto me in the truth. I am not to be a herdsman, I am not to be a grave digger. Not any more will I discourse unto the people, for the last time have I spoken unto the dead. There is his dread. T. Prologue. 19. Speak the Creator, the Reaper, and the Rejoicers will I sow. The rainbow will I show them, and all the stairs to them. For man, to the lone dwellers will I sing my song. Like a friend.